All right, so I'm standing about eight feet away from the car now, so I'm going to be uh, pushing it here in shortly. Uh, the inspection is taking place here uh, enclosed. I typically like to take it outside, but being here in uh, West L.A., parking is limited outside. So at some point when we do get it out uh, to do the road test, uh, I will get out and at least look at it quickly under the uh, natural light. Uh, we've got some here, and we've got fluorescent lighting too, so we have a combination of two going on here. But uh, just to make sure, I, I still want to look at it outside as well. So it should be coming across on the um, on the video. It's got a nice uh, a nice gloss to it, so it, it definitely it presents well uh, from from eight feet away. Even as I come in a little closer, I'm about uh, two feet, two and a half feet away, and still you know you don't really see any cosmetic blemishes. So let's go ahead and just dial in and start checking it out and get up get up close. Okay, starting off with the grill, uh, chrome. Okay, just rub my hand across here. Looks good. I'd say it's uh, acceptable. Um, I don't need any attention just yet. Uh, grill, nicely secured. Main plate, good. Headlights on there properly, good. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna get in real close. That way we can see the quality of the uh, paint. I, m I remember on the other one, you know, there was all kinds of fish eye and, and uh, paint prep issues on, on that one. This one here, it's, uh, it's Real subtle. I have a little scuff mark right there that might be able to come out. And I'm just working my way down here. Good. The paint is smooth to the touch. Just a little bit of speckling there. Uh, but I mean, if I'm about three and a half feet away now, and I don't even see it, but there's a little bit there, right? Little um, scratch here. Let's see if I get a different angle there without that light, the reflection. There it is, I think. All right. So it starts from here at the edge. Here, here, here. So maybe five, six inches in length. Panel fit looks good. Chrome work. At some point, it's going to need some attention here, but uh, still decent. I'd say the car is still definitely in driver quality as of right now. I'm just starting out, so that may change. Looks good. Even the cowl area. This is some little scratches right there as well scuffs glass looks good chrome decent right, well, let's get some uh, meter readings let's get what pa whatever paint meter, meter readings we can get 14 and a half seven seven six and a half good front panel 19.7 so there's some bondo work there nine but I'm not seeing any prep issues okay uh, let's see here left side Okay, you're getting some bondo readings, 9.7, okay. It's in the front here, so it seems like the front's got some body filler in the back. But again, I'll do a quick little scan here. No, I'm not seeing any obvious um, signs of uh, workmanship issues. Again, chrome, we'll, uh, we'll, at some point we'll need some attention. Lines look good, windshield from this side here. Good. Right. Pushing back here, we'll do a side panel view. You get to see the shine on this thing. It's absolutely beautiful. So hopefully this works out for you. Uh, definitely a lot nicer than the other one. All right. And looks good. Always check the spokes here. Tire size is a 165.80 uh, R15. And then DOT numbers are around here somewhere. Oh, there's, it's not one that I can code or decode. Quick shot of the uh, wheel well area. Hopefully I did this for you on the last one because this is something I do on all the cars now. I just try to get as many angles as possible. Good. Push back out again. And then again, just some light, just some light little scuffs there. And let's get some fender readings. 18 and a half, 21, 19. So body filler down here. And I'm sure it's got some here, but maybe a little thicker down there to where I'm not getting that full reading. Glass here on this side, good. No obvious chips, uh, cracks, or signs of delamination. Take a look at the door. 19.7. Okay. All right, so remember that 19.7 is the indication of body filler where I can't get a reading. Two, okay, 17. 19.7. 19.7. All right, so that, the car's definitely got some body filler. But as I run my hand across the paint, 
I'm not feeling any signs of waviness. Here I'm seeing some light, light scuff marks again here and here. So hopefully that comes out because it looks like they've already polished it. So I don't know if that's been an attempt uh, to get those out, but something you definitely want to ask them about because they are there. All right, the outside wheel, check the spokes, good. These are the uh, Nexon tires. Uh, DOT can decode 16580R15s and then the wheel well area. Final view from the back end. Let's hit as many angles as we can. Right. Door doesn't appear to be kicked out. Fairly decent, just a little bit, but nothing too obvious. And then a shot of the rear. Right. Lenses look good. Properly secured. Again, the chrome here, at some point we'll need to get uh, redone, but still not grotesque, right? Rear bumper good little uh, nick there at the edge of the of the um, let me see here uh, let me make sure I get this right uh, we got the uh, boot and the bonnet okay the uh, the boot all right there we go again just a little bit of pitting there on the hinges and then the fuel filler uh, cap quick shot of the inside all right let's get some more readings here I can see some some shrinkage in the paint and I, I'm curious to see what it looks like to, out in the sun but here it's if you catch it at the right angle with the fluorescent lighting on it that's when you can see it okay 197 197 again if we were to compare the two cars this one's still hands down uh, a lot nicer 197 okay 197 all right, I've uh, removed the back panel as well. The spare tire is back there, leather strap to, that secures it like a buckle. I just couldn't get the rim out all the way and I didn't want to force it. Uh, I'm just here to, to actually you know, observe, verify, and not damage. So I didn't want to take any chances, but there is a spare tire back there uh, and it is the spoke one as well. Looking at the uh, back end, the view there. And I like to get really close on the paint too so you can see uh, the workmanship as well. Again, just some little scuffs there. More readings. 18, 19. All right, so some bundle work, but each time I get those bundle readings, I, I just run my hand across it, make sure I don't feel the waviness or, or, or the prep issues. Uh, rear wheel, spokes all properly secured, and the wheel well area. And side view. All right. More readings, 19.7. I mean, we already know it has bondos, and do I really need to take my paint meter measurements? Yes or no? I just, I'm doing it, might as well do the complete thing. All right, 19.7. I think I got the side already, sorry about that. And then the left uh, front wheel well area. Shaky with my hand there. All right, now I'll push back one last time here and move on. So I've been out here doing the uh, uh, videos and checking the engine bay area. Uh, so the engine has a ran for probably a good 45 minutes or so. So I'm going to be starting it here for, I guess, for the second time. And then I just want to make sure you experience what I am uh, or what to expect so when you get the vehicle. All right, so just to play on the safe side and get my foot on the clutch. By the way, the clutch has got a good feel to it. Um, it's no excessive play, not too hard. Okay, make sure it's out of gear. And here we go. Keep an eye on the gauges. All right, so I mean, it fired right up. If I remember correctly, I think there was some. Um, 
operational issues with the engine, with the idle, oh, I think it was a choke, if, if I remember correctly, and I'm, if I am talking about the same car. Um, so, so far so good. Okay. And let's get a view of the idle. Looks like it's uh, floating around, I don't know, about uh, six, 600 or so. Oil gauge, let me rev it up a little bit. Good, I definitely wanted to see that go up some here. Good, uh, nice uh, oil pressure there. Temperature gauge, uh, we'll keep an eye on. Fuel gauge is reading a quarter and amperage is uh, uh, flickering there. So let's walk to the back of the uh, vehicle here. And uh, we'll take another look at the exhaust, right? Uh, make sure it's still not uh, blowing out any uh, black, blue, gray, or white smoke to see that little uh, condensation a little bit. But uh, so far looking good. And just like, just like before, I'll, um, I'll let it idle for about 15 or 20 minutes while I shoot the rest of the interior um, and uh, see how it does operational-wise. Get this out of the way here, fender cover. So let's go into the engine bay area. Well, let's look at the, uh, the uh, bonnet, the underside of it. Right, looks uh, pretty straightforward. Firewall looks good. I've already got the still photo of the, uh, the badge there. Wiring looks good. Battery nicely secured. Um, I'll try to get some of those staff numbers that were on the uh, carburetor. So we'll see if that came out or not. But if not, uh, I'll try to get you whatever I can. And just uh, looking around. Really uh, nice and tidy. Okay. And let me uh, remove the um, coolant while it's still, uh, so I can still do it. All right, so I can see a, a green tint to there. I don't see any signs of cross-contamination. Uh, more importantly, we don't see any bubbling. So uh, we're off to a good start here. Let's check for a blow-by, but I'm not seeing any uh, smoke coming out. Okay. All right, and then here's a shot of the firewall area. I'll go in there a little bit for you. Hopefully I'm not moving too fast. I know it's kind of hard to follow when I do that. I always try to stay mindful of that. I'm not hearing any abnormal engine noises, like uh, any uh, deep metallic noises coming from the top or bottom, bottom end. I mean, a, a little bit of I think, what sounds like a little, maybe a little bit of valve noise, but nothing too obvious. And then I've got the, um, the engine number there as well. Steering assembly looks good. Get a view here, and then let's get a view of the, the belts. Good. All right. So far, the uh, the idles uh, uh, idling really nice. And we'll go ahead and just um, take a look at the gauges here, see where we're at. Okay. So a little bit of a rattle noise here, but. Uh, Oh, there we go. All right. So the um, the glove box cover. Uh, she's a rattler. <laughs> All right. I'll get into the operational issues on the next segment here, but uh, let me go ahead and move on here. And one final look at the exhaust looks good. I need to do the light check as well. I'm gonna add on to the engine portion of it because I know when I was uh, walking away, I did smell like a little bit of uh, what smelled like maybe. Uh, fluid burning like a, a smoke or what have you and when I looked at the engine bay I could see smoke coming here from the back uh, on the intake manifold side exhaust manifold I should say and uh, I don't know if the smoke is coming out where you can see it yeah it should be coming out right there so I get in there a little deeper I don't know if the vehicle's been recently serviced or not, but it's something you may want to ask it and uh, bring that up as as a concern. And again, a little rattly. Uh, okay, uh, and here when I put my hand on the bonnet, that rattle noise does go away. So, all right. Hi and high beams. 
Okay, good. Can you do the uh, blinker? Left and right? Nah, nothing yet. No, uh, no blinker. All right. Uh, what about the windshield wipers? Oh, horn works, good. Uh, windshield wipers? Uh, we'll get back to that. Brake lights? Yeah, no brake lights. No uh, Headlights? Okay, running lights and the uh, license plate light work. Yep, and uh, let's try the turn signals. Okay, yeah, no turn signals. Okay, no break light. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm doing a video of the underside now too, just in case you know I miss something with a photo, I'm not getting the right angle. So this has been helpful as well. So here we go. It's kind of nice too because it gives you like a, a continuous view or like a flow uh, of the image, right? As opposed to the still photos. So so far it's looking pretty good. And these guys are, are great. They. Uh, uh, they volunteered the uh, floor jack right away, so that just gives me a better view of what I'm inspecting here. So far, it looks pretty, pretty clean. And I'll take still photos of the other side as well. All right, now we're just doing the uh, video here of the right side of the uh, front suspension area. Even the uh, inner fender welder are, are clean. And again, I try to capture as many angles as possible. All right. I'm actually risking my life for you here. Um, I'm under the car and there's no floor uh, jack stands, so I'm gonna make this quick. This uh, looks like there's some wetness there coming from the front crankshaft seal, but I don't see this massive runoff. And then again, the underside. I'll try to get in there with the uh, better shot of the transmission. All right, here's a video of the uh, backside. Try to keep the camera as steady as possible. And I'll try to dial in on the on the uh, transmission better. There we can see just a little bit of wetness and like right down below, this, it is dripping to the ground on this one. So I get the cone here. Right. Try to straighten out. Right. And time to reposition. All right. Here I'm on the uh, left side of the vehicle. We'll capture as much as we can. Sorry about the jerking there. I'm on my back here. Push in there. Rails, uh, rails look good. Oh, let me uh, see if I can get the transmission here. There it is. Okay, more pins. Hopefully it's not moving too fast or jerky. I know that's kind of hard to follow. And just do a slow view to the back side. position.
then uh, we'll do a quick view of the uh, back side. And the rails look pretty good. And there we go. So just a couple of spots there on the, uh, there by the engine transmission area. All right, getting ready for the uh, road test. So I wanted to get a shot of this while it's out here in the natural light, but of course now we've got dappled shade. So it's uh, hard to get a break here, but uh, again, there's no real obvious uh, cosmetic issues. I, I know there is some imperfections there, but nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Just a, a small little dent here, a little ding, maybe. Uh, but definitely a, a, a presentable car. Yeah, the dental sheet's killing me. So uh, uh, first gear, no problem. Uh, going into second, uh, it seemed uh, seamless. Um, here in this west LA, the, the traffic is brutal. Uh, so I'm just gonna have a Ruben uh, uh, test drive because I can't get into any. I mean, we'll be lucky if we can go over 25 miles an hour at some point. Uh, but we'll try to go through every single gear, try to check for shimming, check it operationally as well. And um, I'll go ahead and just add to the uh, video as we move on. And we'll keep an eye on the uh, anometer to make sure that that's uh, working, you know, it's registering. And, uh, if we hit the faster speeds, uh, then I'd like to get a shot of the oil pressure as well. So again, you know, some rattling, but uh, I think it's uh, uh, kind of one of the characteristics of this vehicle. So, and, uh, well, I guess we'll see if we can test that overdrive if we can. So we'll, we'll do. It's gonna be a four, four speed. Over yeah. There okay. Four. Let's right. here. Um, here we go. I'll stay quiet. There here. No issue. Again, it's gonna be tough to get a break here. Right. I'll try to go through the gears here. Second. Third. I mean, this has got a great performance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right, we just yeah. the uh, yeah. overdrive uh, kick in right now. Yeah. All right, so uh, we verified the operation here. Yeah. Uh, we're doing about 40 some odd miles an hour. Uh, 2200 RPM. So yeah. I, I think that's the operator, not the car. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got plenty of video there. I didn't uh, see any pulsation coming from the steering wheel or, or vibrations as we were driving at the, uh, slightly higher speeds. And I forgot to keep an eye on the oil, so I'm gonna do that one more time. Oil pressure. And I think I saw it hit around 50. Uh, we're at uh, 40 miles an hour. Here we go. The fuel gauge was working earlier. It seems like it's, it's uh, stuck. It's stuck now. So we did add some fuel for going down the road just to make sure. Uh, temperature too, uh, it's uh, maintaining it's around half. And also when I had the vehicle um, idling at the shop, I could hear the cooling fan uh, uh, engage and disengage as well. So so uh, that seems to be working as well. So uh, yep, we're gonna be heading back and we'll wrap it up.